Hi, my name is Waratah Kalu. I'm an intimacy consultant and relationship coach, and I'm here talking today about Tantra. So just introducing some of the concepts that I work with uh, within the workshops and within one-on-one -on -one consultancy working with individuals and couples. So what is Tantra? For a lot of people, they hear the word Tantra and they immediately think that you know they're going to be called to be some sort of sexual guru or or the other one is the Kama Sutra. So the Kama Sutra is about sexual positions and you know Tantra may lead to the Kama Sutra, sexual positions, but it's not, it's not its base. So where Tantra began was within Buddhism and in a nutshell it was um, about on an individual level finding transcendence by harmonizing the masculine and feminine energies within the one being. As I say that's in a nutshell. It then went to early um, Hinduism, and we can see the very similar, um, very similar beliefs within the the Taoism, the Chinese, which is the yin, the, and, uh, the yin and the yang. So in the Hindu, they talk about Shiva and Shakti. So we have the feminine and the masculine energies. The Shiva being the masculine energy, the Shakti being the feminine. So if we were to think of it in terms of that, that the Shiva energy is it is hot, it is present, it, is, it stands in stillness, in awareness, it's integrity, it's truth, it's holding the space. So it's the mountain energy. Shakti, the feminine energy, the divine feminine energy is the movement, so like the river going from you know, stream to raging torrent. It's the seasons. It's the changing from, you know, the, the, the tides, the moon, the emotions, the different, all the different faces of, of, of woman, if you like, of the goddess. So movement and Shiva being the stillness. And we need those two qualities and we need those two qualities in balance. And for instance, within, within a relationship, if you're both in the in the Shakti energy of you know of, of movement, say say for instance within a, an argument that you know you're both in there, one of you needs to be able to stand back and just hold the presence, just allowing that this will change. That's the thing about Shakti energy; it changes. It's always changing. So we learn to harmonise the masculine and feminine within our own beings, and we learn to in Tantra to harmonise that within a relationship. So in yoga we are very much, we've learned how to come from the head down into the heart, to be present in our heart space. In Tantra we're learning how to bring the lower energy centres up into the heart so that we have that complete alignment, harmonising, balancing of all of our energy centres. So within, a, uh, within the individual, within a man, his genitals are, are yang. His heart is yin. Within a woman, it's the opposite way around. Her heart is yang, the genital is yin. And so let's bring some terminology into this. So the, the terminology, and the, the Taoists have, have gorgeous terminology. So for, for the, uh, the masculine, for the penis, they've got uh, the jade stem, or the jade emperor. And for the for the um, the female, the vagina, the cinnabar cave, or the, um, the the jade palace. So we get these beautiful analogies of the the jade emperor is at the palace gates and and so forth. So in Hinduism, the the masculine is the lingam, and the feminine is the yoni. So the lingam is the wand of light. I always think of young boys with their lightsabers, you know channeling that, that energy, that, that wand of light, lingam energy. And for, for the woman's face, the yoni, is, is not, is, it translates as the sacred place or sacred space, so, or the palace even. So wanting, um, and so they're harmonising, the harmonising of, of these masculine and feminine, these dual polarities. So for, for a man, his, his sexual energy is fire. And you know, quite often that fire just burns really quickly, and and it and it burns out. For woman, the 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 feminine sexual energy is is water. 
So that's why the fire and the water, they're needed, they're both needed. We need the fire to warm the water. But we also need the water to temper the fire so that it can keep burning a bit longer. Yeah? But then when we come to the heart space, there, there's difference as well. We have the polarity of the, the yang within the woman and the yin within the man. So just as, you know, for, so if we think of these as, as introverted and extroverted, so the, the man's lingam is, is extroverted, it, you know, it's out there in the world and it wants to be out there, it wants to have expression, you know, it's, it's hot, yeah? Whereas his heart space is yin. It's introverted. For a woman, the yoni is yin. It's introverted, it's cool, it's quiet. It's secret, sacred. And her heart space is yang, which is why women, you know, you can see they can just give, they can give to community, they can, you know, create, their, their hearts are just out there in the words, extroverted, yeah? So for, for men, it's learning to bring that heat of the lingam up into the heart. And for women, it's learning for, to bring the heat of the heart down into the yoni. So we do that on an individual level, but we do that with a partner. And a lot of the way that we do that is by connecting through eyesight, through, through eye gazing, but also through connecting our breath and moving the energy. So we need to slow everything down. We need to quieten everything down. It's a meditative space. It doesn't mean that it's devoid of fun. But we learn to quieten down so that we can connect. Fully. And this eye gazing, this breathing, this can be, you know, a very simple practice that you can bring into your everyday relationship. Where you, you know, at the end of the day, when you connect up, that you just spend a couple of moments. It doesn't have to be long. And you stand before your partner, or you sit before your partner, and you connect through your eyes and through your breath. You begin to breathe together, moving the breath, You're slowing everything down, letting the day be shut. Letting the office be left. You know, from there, okay, the day, the night, the evening progresses. Dinner has to be cooked, kids have to be looked after, all these sorts of things. But we create these moments of connection. And so this is what I very much teach within the workshops, is how to create these moments of connection. You know, that we set aside time to nourish and nurture our relationships. You know, we put so much energy into our children, we put so much energy into our business in creating, you know, these things. Our, our relationship is, is also, it's a, it is a set, if we see it as a separate entity that needs our input, needs our continual input. I see relationship, you know, like a fire that needs the logs put on it. Initially when we're in relationship, you know, we do that well and the fire burns strong and then, you know, life can get in the way. So what I teach is very much very simple, practical, grounded ways to bring connection back into a relationship or to maintain connection within a relationship. That we can remain connected allows us to remain intimate. You know, there's this great, um, very famous sexologist talking uh, the other day that I heard and she said that sex isn't something that we do, it's a place we go to. And the vehicle that we need to go to that is intimacy, is these moments of connection. So that's in a nutshell what it is that, that, I, uh, that I teach um, and that I bring to my work. So thank you for listening and hoping to connect with you soon. You can find me on www.waratahkarleu.com or at tantraadelaide.com. I offer individual sessions with couples, with individuals, I offer workshops, and I also offer consultations over Skype. Thank you.